The conversation here starts as we're getting sound levels for the guests in New York, and they notice some cameras in our New York bureau. Well, maybe it won't. I don't think it would be on the webcam. <coughs> I think, no, I mean, for whoever's watching. Oh. Ah. That's not fair. They get to watch and we don't. I know. Uh, it's very kind of big brother. Huh. Speaking of big brother. Oh, here you oh, are. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. Hello. How is everybody? Good. We can't yeah. see you, can we? No. We can't hear ourselves either. Okay, we'll get there. It feels like you're in my head, though. I am in your head. And you've been in my head all day and night and last night. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I can hear you now. It, it happens. Turn it out. So, uh, is Joey there? Yes. Great. Nigel? I am here. Awesome. Tom? Yes. Great. So, um, I'd ask uh, Nigel loads of complex stuff because he's just got out of bed. Oh, <laughs> good. So, how long are you in New York for? Oh, the weekend. Excellent. So, have you seen any music yet? Uh, no. We're going to DJ tonight and tomorrow night we're DJing at MoMA PS1. When you do a DJ set, do you, uh, are you trying to get people dance or are you trying to fill them with their, their ears with great texture? What's going on there? Mm. I'd say get them dance. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I look at it anyway. Mm. So what but would you, what would you put much. on first? Oh. Ooh. That's, that's, a, that's <laughs> a tough question. <laughs> it really to, depends on if who I could following. see you, I could tell you. Uh, I don't know what you look like. I'm just a guy. <laughs> I don't have yeah, hair. I play too many so electronics I and I don't have any hair. I don't oh, really. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know. There's how a connection, got, by the um, way. We don't really know how Do we brothers, started so doing it. We just sort of started doing it for a laugh, really. I mean, I I, I got back into it really, so I didn't have to talk to anyone. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's great. You do actually have a role at the party. You know, where you, yeah, I, can, I can feel like I belong, but I don't have to connect. You know, I think that's the plight of so many musicians or um, people who DJ is is that they want to find some place to fit in. They want a role, uh, and but they're shy people or, yeah. or re reserve. Uh, uh, there, there is also the issue of like walking to a party and music is so shit. Yeah, actually, that's yeah. what happened. What I found, like I started DJing because my friend is a sort of a promoter in LA and he just is always doing parties he said oh do you fancy having a go and I thought sure I'll have a go but it's almost like you know when people come around to your house and you get to choose what to put on the stereo you know it's that kind of it feels nice there's nothing more satisfying than that, than filling a room with the right thing at the mm. right time though I think and that's that's true of live music too when you I mean you're not going out to clubs maybe uh, for uh, bands and stuff this time but when you go see a group, I'll start with Nigel, uh, just so people know whose voice is who here. Nigel, when you go and, and hear mu live music, uh, what do you hope to hear? What, do you, what, what would excite you? What would go home and say, wow? Hmm. That's a tricky question, isn't it? It's, uh, oh, they I, get harder. Really? <laughs> this is an easy one. So you, you, go oh, you, you won't you believe this. You get the warm-up, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get the warm-up. Uh, what do I hope to hear? I mean, I hope to be surprised. I hope to see something I'm not expecting, actually. So I go in without any preconceptions, hopefully. But hopefully leave with a, you know, and see something that I haven't seen before. I mean, that's the thing that I respond to most of all these days is just some originality. Because it's such a sort of, it's a hard thing to do, I think. Depending on what the show, I mean, if it's somebody I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. If it's a band that I do know, then I just want to, I want to hear the hits, man. <laughs> Is that I, true? <laughs> I know. I just you know. You know. I mean, it, it's, so, it's it's that it's, was that was English sarcasm. Sorry, oh, I think he can point that out every time. You I can't see your face. It's, it's probably really better hard, that yeah. way. Yeah, but I I uh, you know I I don't know. I mean, I think it's wrong to walk into any situation with any preconceptions or expectation. So um, especially music is really it's a really hard one because it's so intangible. But um, I would hope to be carried away in a way that I couldn't explain to you with words. Are there any bands that you, that may have happened to recently for? Any of you, I guess. I mean, honestly, I saw the Chili Peppers in Paris a f like a month ago, and it was a amazing gig. You remember that Giles Peterson thing we did, went to? What was, uh, what was Giles doing? He, he he puts together every year. He puts together a few few bands. And it stuff. was like an awards thing for it his was show. Awards thing, yeah. yeah, worldwide awards, and there were some amazing acts that night. And for people who don't know, Giles Peterson is a he's DJ a, that's you know very influential back home yeah. for you guys. Yes, he is. He's he's well, it's really important to a lot of the music I listen to because he crosses a lot of different areas, jazz, um, Afrobeat, and he's an, a frightening expert on both of those, and then like a lot of the current stuff as well. He's sort of like a sort of contemporary, in a way, he's a kind of a John Peel for the sort of yeah. modern generation, I would say. You know, he has that sort of ability to just it's play more things. Because really. he's much more dance oriented than, yeah, than John which, Peel. Yeah, which is sort of, but it's like more appropriate to our, to this kind of generation. Yeah. yeah, this sort of mode of 
music that and we're in now. You mentioned the Afrobeat stuff and music you hear from uh, Giles Peterson. The opening cut for the new record, can I play that for a bit? And I want to just want to sort of talk about, first I want to talk about the guitar. Maybe we'll break some of this music down. I'm going to play it. I'm going to keep your mics open, but uh, let's give it a little bit to breathe and then I'll pull it down and we'll talk over it for a little bit. Is that okay? <sighs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Number one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> Straight in at number one. <laughs> it timing's everything. All right, hit it. <laughs> so uh, let's we'll start with the guitar. We'll come back and play a little bit more. But um, it was at the beginning of the tune. I'm just thinking that maybe that's where the tune started. But who's playing it? And uh, uh, it feels very South African to me. Um, no, it was not the beginning of the tune. Oh, what was the beginning of the tune? Yeah, well, we did this thing. Uh, we were out on tour for a couple of weeks. What year uh, are we talking? Uh, 2000. Oh, 10, apparently. And we had we had an absolute blast from doing it. There was loads of energy to it. And that. So we went into the studio at the end with not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> kind of nothing at all. And the only thing we had to go on was like a few basically little laptop bits that Mar- we would come up with. Yeah. yeah. And Mauro was the Mauro uh, Rafasco, is that how you say his name? Mm-hmm. Uh, percussionist, go on. Yeah, we just had these little ideas that Tom had come up with. And we'd been on tour getting used to playing with each other and developing a uh, chemistry. And then we were able to do that in the studio and translate what we were doing live to uh, some new material. Well, let's talk, uh, it, mm. tr- it's really hard, I know, to go back and tr- sort of imagine the, like this blossom at this point where this thing became this this thing, right? Like, so <laughs> somewhere, something started, is it possible at all to sort of, re- you said there's something on a laptop, is it, was it their synth line, was it a rhythm, was it a... Uh, no, all it was, it was a basic sketch for a rhythm, and then Joey and Mara do this freaky thing, which I've never seen before, but apparently people do. Where <laughs> Joey's even got your own, you've got your own language for how you write down the rhythms, right? Pretty like much, a, yeah. <laughs> complete gobbledygook to me. Um, so they would sit there and they just uh, they'd score this stuff out, um, this this laptop thing, and they kind of went in and played it. And as soon as it sort of comes to life, then Flea and I basically respond to that because mm-hmm. that's like what Joey's saying about. Um, we're sort of building up this sort of way that we connect to each other musically and, that, and so it was that I was pursuing that idea and um, and there was this, this this little glimmer of a piano thing in it and um, Flea picks up on that on the bass line and mm-hmm. then I responded to that and mm-hmm. and this all basically happens we're not mm-hmm. thinking about this we basically went into the studio it was the old jazz idea of well, it was sort of Miles Davis thing of like just free form and we'll you know when things pass by we'll pick up on them that work and basically we did an intensive sort of three day thing to just generate a lot of material that we could then go away and listen to uh-huh. and uh, Tom had a, a few things sort of just floating around that were on his on his laptop rhythms that he'd made and then it was just it was just go 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 so for example this song the bit that you hear the riff might have been happening for five minutes of a half an hour mm-hmm. if that you know if that exactly because what you end up with is a very small piece like a slice of the music that then gets kind of distilled down into something taken away i think you know you told me he he listens to stuff in his car and he thinks about mm-hmm. melodies and you know and it all you know we periodically we get together every few weeks and that just a bit uh, it was it was it was bonkers to be honest the most the really wild thing about it was how much material we generated in three days yeah, yeah, it was it was we still i mean there's still a ton of it i'm left, still yeah. going yeah. Yeah. i'm literally i'm still going oh, amazing. Like, because it's just stuff. it literally was play it was playing all, every day all day i mean you know yeah. these guys are every day all day and they're, then you're exhausted yeah. I, I assume then you listen somebody pulls out as nigel as uh your title in th- that's listed production and programming sounds so sterile but but you are in, in some ways you're i would think you're the <laughs> sort of the minor the guy who's like digging through maybe the you child. are <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no. I mean, that's, I guess that is my. I mean, that's my contribution. Is is my, it's it's. Hit, I mean, I hear things as they go past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does Tom. But but I mean, that I, that's I can't. I can't. See, Nigel picks up on them immediately, and it takes me. I will listen to the same thing ten times, and then I'll start seeing. It's it's like Nigel's really fast, and he doesn't allow me to go back. 
So, <laughs> like, so he'll choose a bit. This bit's mm. good. This bit's good. And this bit's good. And I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, but what about that yeah. bit back then? Well, yeah. and and then do you, do you <laughs> Nigel then play this for the band and and then you all work on that part again? Is that well? Yeah, I mean, there wasn't time to do that at the time. Right. I mean, what 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 you t- you know, the faster you can work, the better it generally is. I mean, because your brain, our brains are only able to make like one layer of decisions. So you try and make these choices very, very early on, then you end up with a pile of choices of, of lots of different things. And then what would happen, well, because everybody's in LA and Tom and I were in England, so we just got together and just sort of listened back to what we had and then sort of, like I said, just distill it down to like a shorter version that he takes away, goes and thinks about melodies, and then we get together again. Mm. Then we came back to LA and we were working at Joey's place for a bit, mm. doing the same thing sort of instrumentally by like going back to parts you know rhythmic parts and musical mm-hmm. parts and doing the same sort of thing we're like refining them or change, you know because was, they've developed you know yeah. but it was really fun you know hanging out at joe's house and all this with these rhythms just coming out of the speakers all the time and it was we needed to add so little to give you a way in which which, which i loved you know it was like so much it was just there you know a mm-hmm. lot of the time mm-hmm. so uh when he says Miles Davis, he's, he's probably, I mean, I'm assuming, he's, you know, they, very famously, they made a record that was all like this. It was just a bunch of jams, and the art was in the editing, putting things together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in a silent way, you know. And it's like that, that thing, it always springs to people like us, always use that mm-hmm. as a reference, because it is such a freeing method, you know, and it's a way of, like, getting musicians to bring out the best in people, you know, to just have no kind of uh, limitations or, you know, to not be pinned down. It's very fun. And it's very productive. But also, um, if you're if you're going about something where you're you're, you know, so much of what the Asmus for, for Peace thing is, is like the revelation of like Joey and Mauro um, translating these electronic beats absolutely into this new thing that we didn't have, and how musically the five of us then respond to that, um, and and. Like okay, how 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 do we carry on with this? So it's it's so much ab- about the rhythm side of things anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean. So to me, I wanted like, don't ask me for songs. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need that shit. You mm-hmm. know, I can hear it in like, you know, you walk into rehearsal or in sound check one one morning and like, you know, Flea started up a bass line and Joey's doing this thing on the kick. You're like, shit, man, that's th- <coughs> that's there. It's ready to go. <laughs> you know, right. and and it was just a really. Um, it was really different for me. I'd never had that before. That's awesome. Like, Can I play like a, 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 a cut, another cut, uh, top of uh, the song Dropped for a minute? Uh, I want to ask you about, you're talking about uh, rhythms and so forth, and uh, I want to just ask you about something, because playing, uh, a p- real percussionist playing with electronics is a challenge, and I just want to play this for a minute and talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You want to get to the bit where it breaks out, do you? Really? Yeah, I do that. But I also just, if people listen to uh, what is that, d- 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 which is a, sort of an arpeggiated sound on maybe it's a mo- Moog or maybe it's an Arp Odyssey or oh, something. It's not and, bad, is it? Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. And <laughs> okay. Okay. That's impressive. And then, well, <laughs> I used it, my first instrument was an Arp Odyssey, so I'm, I'm partial to those and know those mm. sounds. The the um, but one of the things that always drove the drummer in my band crazy whenever I would do something like that is he could never play along with the pulse of a synth. It was just like the hardest thing on the planet yeah. and you've all mm. sort of licked that and f- so I'm wondering two things I'm wondering does that did that pulse from the synth come first and the percussions play on top of it that's question one well it all comes in different directions but in this yeah. in this yeah. in this piece do you remember well I mean and I guess I ask that because it's so hard and you do it so well to play real percussion on top of something that's so stilted. Should we tell him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew oh, I'd get on. there. Come on, tell me. Well, I mean, it's because there's time when, they're, when they're, you know, we're blurring it so you can't tell what's electric and what's so not. So why, sh- yeah, we, you have to guess. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, where's, where's, where's the real percussion coming okay. in? Okay. Well, I don't know if you're, you're hitting on, uh, on rubber that's triggering electronics or yeah. what, what's going on here. It's uh, also great sounding no, on headphones. The, no, that's just the original beat. Yeah. It's so programmed. Yeah. You say is programmed. Is, who's, who's this is that? programmed, this bit. Mm. Yeah. That yeah. Was, because we found that like, a lot of the time that, that it was be- It was like, no matter how, no matter how tight... I mean, because Joey and Mauro, they can play that, no worries. But it was actually the sound would be the reason. So 
we choose it simply over the sounds rather than um, anything else. So where do know? they come in? And also, no, it, they come in at the end of this tune. You know? Okay, can we skip it? Let me just skip ahead because I want to hear that. And Magic. Jerry's in there. He's in there. Jerry's playing in there. Okay. That's Jerry. Mm. Oh yeah. And I, Mara's doing this like sweeping up sound. Oh yeah, he's on a, what? Yeah, he's, what is he yeah. playing? Oh, you, there's a break oh, and you hear him very. What is it? It's like. It's like, yeah, like a, a he's got this spring. thing that looks a little bit it's like spring, the inside of a washing machine. Here it is. Listen. It's that thing. <laughs> there. It's a bunch of kitchenware, right? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. He's doing his. Yeah. I mean, That's I think awesome. there actually is a name for that thing. Yeah, Reiko, the kitchen Reiko. sink. Oh. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a it's a Brazilian instrument. So it's but it's basically it's just a spring. <laughs> cool. Oh yes, 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 with the horn on the end. It's that mm-hmm. one. Oh, yeah. A spring with a horn on the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he plays with what four on the dark. I think is where I, I know that name, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. That's right. Any, anywhere else I might well, like, know him from, and he's he's not with us today no, in the studio. He, yeah, well, he plays he played with David Byrne for years and years. Oh, on the Brazilian. Okay, yeah, yeah, he right, started there, and stuff. I think he stayed. I think That's he kept right. him because he's such a. But I mean, it, it, to 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 be fair, it's the like Marrow, for example, when we w- did the initial recording. There's so much stuff that gets sprayed liberally on everything or oh, and you just happen to pick a song where he wasn't on it and Joey wasn't on it for the first part mm-hmm. but actually you know it, it's uh, it's kind of all over everywhere that song I think it's because it that had sort of existed for a while and yeah. it had a beat and then you know you rightly point out that the, the arpeggiated keyboard was the way into writing a vocal melody you know we needed to put some music on it because all it was was a beat but uh but yeah, they're all they're, every single one is different. That's the thing. It's yeah, like, and it's like an ongoing. It's, it's difficult because, you know, the thing I'm most excited about is the fact that now there is a band to this, and it's not just Tom with his laptop and Nigel putting it together, and that's that. And it's there's much more energy and much more of a. Well, it's of, fun. There are people in a room. It's a fact. <laughs> yeah, you've got, a, got, a, you've got a goal as well. Do you know way. what I mean? You've got a thing that you're heading towards. It's like you and and you know I think I should say as well. The other thing about that, for example, is. Even if, for example, it just ends up being, you know, a program beat for like a couple of minutes in the song, that's not because we didn't all play on it at one point and that didn't inform what happened. It became sort of formed as a result of all the things and we, sometimes you take a step back because you realise that something is overdone, sometimes you, you know, you add things that aren't there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really a mixture of the whole thing. Really, we were making a record, you know, and really we were making a record to, to play and one that had, you know, when we first started doing the new, working on the new material, it was after we did the first shows, the first couple of shows, and we realised we just didn't have enough stuff. <laughs> so we went, <laughs> we could only do like an hour show, so we went away and sat down and started sort That's of right, sketching yeah, out yeah, things. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Sketching out things that we could then take to the band, you know, and, yeah. and that, that's how it happened. We took it back to the band, Band, we started playing these things in the room in rehearsals and stuff and yeah, then we did the right. recording session so then we ended up having like a sort of complete electronic version of something a complete analog version of something and, the, and it was the fun bit was like working out what works the best yeah, but with the knowledge the that knowing that it was the, it, did come, it came from that mm-hmm. from that brainstorming session with everybody together so whatever we end up with it's something that's going to work right. and that's the really exciting part mm-hmm. is the idea, th- the idea of playing it but could you imagine like you're on stage and somebody just starts an idea and you you do what you did in some of these sessions. Could you imagine having something unfold that you had no idea where it was going to go? I mean, when you, you're you going to do a concert, you're going to do these songs that came out of these long sessions. Could you mm. imagine as a band doing a piece of music that was actually just, let's see what happens? You're talking about jamming. Well, I mean, <laughs> okay. you could, well, I mean, okay. I've got rules we, about you, that shit. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me about those rules. And because... And, there are two things that happen as an audience person. We talk right at the top about what do you want to see when you go to see a band. You want to see a surprise. Mm. And and even as a player on stage, one of the most amazing things is when something happens that you don't expect to happen. Granted, that can happen in the format of having a song that you know beginning, middle, and end, where it's going to go. Those surprises can happen. But one of the things jamming is such a has such a terrible connotation to it for so many people right and you you were going to tell me about your rules uh, but well, but but there's something amazing when you're in an audience and something happens and two musicians all of a sudden start communicating on something they had no idea was going to happen uh, yeah i still i mean uh, you know to me it's like rhythmically jamming is great mm-hmm. you know 
jamming when it means some guy with a guitar mm -hmm. and a distortion pedal. You know, right. I'm, well, there's I'm not down okay. with that. Right, but we have um, other instruments. We yes, no, exactly. Other. No, I'm, and, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of... Um, I mean, well, we, get to, we get to see that we have that experience when we rehearse, you know, mm -hmm. when we're working mm -hmm. out, you know, there's, there's 10 different ways of doing things and the joy is like playing it and figuring stuff out. Fleet, Fleet is arts jam, um, arts jam Meister, you know. It's true. <laughs> like, literally, every, every time we get together, the first hour is like, well, that's what we do. Yeah. But like, to me, I'm like, maybe, you know, sometimes actually stuff could, you know, I could see maybe stuff coming out, but to me, it's like, well, no, you're limbering up. That's yeah. literally yeah. what you're doing. Just clearing yeah. your throat. Just like you're being in, yeah, you're in the gym, you're warming up. But also the amazing thing is like listening to Mauro trying to play something impossible. Like you can play him some like crackly white noise and he'll try and play it. Right. <laughs> and that that's when he, that, that's, he, I mean, to me, I mean, he's an amazing percussion player, but he shines at that. I mean, that's the stuff that you talk about going to a gig and being surprised. I mean, I feel like originally, you know, when we got the band together, it was Tom had this idea about, getting a band to p together to play the eraser you know an album that was made like four years before mm -hmm. but he just sort of said oh, i'm just obsessed with this idea about getting like latin percussion playing getting like getting joey specifically <laughs> you know because I we've known joey. joey no because yeah, he, he wants to play with joey. <laughs> you know joey and i you know we've worked together for a long time like we joe and i met when we were recording mutations you know it was a long time ago and mm -hmm. you know i just left that whole experience absolutely ranting about him because to, to Tom, you know, so for years, you know, it's like the best drummer I've ever worked with, you know, it's just incredible. Oh, and uh, so Tom had to listen to me yapping. You guys give each other a big hug. Yeah, <laughs> we're actually sitting on each other's <laughs> laps at the moment. <laughs> yeah. And, and anyway, but so what happened was when, you know, in the process of trying to play, it's a, kind of a genius idea, you know, taking the eraser, say, taking something very electronic and playing it acoustically. And what we found was that the sound of them doing that is something I've never heard before. <laughs> you know, something that no one's ever tried before. So you can jam, but in a way, the mo more interesting stuff is when you have those, you know, you give Marrow a beat, and then when he's jamming in inverted commas, it's not like a jam. It's not like he's just going off on one. He's just, he's trying to play something, but what he plays is not the thing. It's just something else really, really interesting. Well, this right. is, yeah, I mean, and like you, sorry, Joe, you, you remember, do you remember that time you were in that? in your studio and I just played that bleepy thing and you played that beat on top yeah and it's an element of just uh, kind of reinterpreting sounds and, mm. and it's definitely improvisational and it's something transcendent about you know just just jamming of course but yeah to me that's exciting when there's a little more structure I mean I kind of like the best of both worlds personally mm -hmm. and you know going back to like when you see a show that's that's when it's really really exciting well when you go out and do this as a tour this record uh, at some point you're gonna do that how much will you leave free how much does I don't know do you have a, a sequencer running behind you so you're locked into never. something never no and that's people say to us they say oh yeah that's cool man yeah it's cool um, you play people think that we're playing to tracks uh-huh and I'm it's not. not it's because Good. so yeah crazy experience for me be, as a drummer i mean you know i've definitely dabbled with that because you know i'm just interested in all all the different ways of of doing it but playing with uh well with Mauro, but with all of us i mean we're we're all trying to do as much as we can to to you know serve serve the music and uh yeah, it just ended up sounding kind of enormous. Well, it's, to me, it's like going back to what we were just saying before about the whole jamming thing or the improvisation thing. It's mm -hmm. like the whole key to it for me, really, is the tension you get between the machines and the human response to them and how these guys, they work very fast. They'll just hear something and they're on it. And they're, um, Joe especially is... I, I'm, I'm able to sort of just play a, a bleep with no... <laughs> one or two or no it's like the, 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 the running joke in the band is where's the one but you know I, I get that everywhere I go now but and Jerry will just spark up on something straight away like and it's the, one of the tunes I'm working on at the moment which is not on this record or anything it's just it just completely stuns me and the way he just come just just responded to this this little pattern and made something really small poxy and laptopy into something ridiculously enormous simply in the act of like his human response to what it was and when we the sort of atoms formed and we're doing the raisin thing this was around the same time that i'd started djing and discovered that i liked the ideas around the dubstep thing but it was really annoying me that there was no human element to it at all 
And it was also really obvious the crossover between it and the old Afrobeat rhythms. So it was all just sort of gelling in my head quite a lot, you know. And and um, when we discovered there was like this quite a lot of energy that when we played together there was this crazy energy and how actually the one thing that we all really identified with was kind of the Afrobeat thing. I was like, whoa, we're kind of really on something. When we went around to Flea's house and played pool all, all night and listened to um, Fela Kuti, it was like, <laughs> okay, this is good. <laughs> this is <laughs> I couldn't have asked for anything <laughs> better than this because it's like it just it was just a real jump off point, you know, like. I, it started off with like a laptop album, all made in headphones with confined beats and confined structure, and then suddenly it's become this other thing completely. But yet, it's always kind of informed by that. Mm, mm-hmm. and it's he, unusual. See, it's panoramic. It just becomes like something very kind of colourful. And, and his performances live was it was like this monster machine behind him. <laughs> yeah. This rhythm it was, it was unbelievable. What are you about Flea? No, oh, oh I, right. I'm sorry. I was talking about Fela Kuti. Oh, yeah. um, just see, seeing same thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> topless. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, and but any once you had that names. that that bass going on, B A S E or B A S S. But once you had that bass there, anything could happen on top of it. There was so much freedom for all the other players to to do yeah. stuff. Yeah, except you do those keyboard solos that went on a bit longer. Yeah, <laughs> it was 1970s. So <laughs> couldn't help it. <laughs> This is maybe a silly question, but but I think about this sometimes when I hear musicians that get together, you never would have imagined getting together. And and anybody tackle this, who cares to, which is, is this sort of happenstance? Is it, did it happen because you desired it to happen? Or, or, or do any of you believe in fate that you all in some way, shape or form were fated to play together? Um, hmm. Maybe. Yeah, because, I mean, each musician sort of, we all came to it in different ways. I mean, obviously Nigel and I knew each other, and actually we'd hung out with Joe, I'd hung out with you a lot, and I'd met you when Where, you Where'd you hang REM. out with Joey? Yeah. Joey. We well, first met you playing with R.E.M., right? Yeah. We rehearsed together with R.E.M. That's absolutely when, right. When Bill left, yeah? Yeah. That was very yeah. surreal. In, yeah, quite a while ago. Mm-hmm. Flea, it was, it was like one of the things that actually got me thinking about doing it properly was was bumping into Flea in London uh, was a show and him and John were going on about the Rays and I was like, really? Mm. Remember, because mm-hmm. we both yeah, went yeah. to see them and like, how did you do that? <coughs> <coughs> we're like, oh, well, uh, it was, uh, yes, it took us hours, not, you know. <laughs> we were all sort of, gave us, it was sort of like, wow, they really like hours. it. They did He's take trying hours, to play actually, it now. Yeah, no, all right, fair enough. <laughs> 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 yeah, but no, it's, un- it's funny, isn't it? Because Flea's a big fan of uh, electronic music as well. It's funny, he, you know, he's like a massive Aphex Twin fan. Yep. Mm. Right. And he's, you know, he's really up on all that kind of stuff, whatever. And I know that, like, when we, the thing about the Eraser as an album, and you'd said this to me before as well, you're thinking about all the bass lines, all those things that you think are bass lines on the Eraser, even if they're not. So you need to have that kind of aggressiveness, that sort of attack to be able to really change the lead them. lines. You yeah, know, exactly. And how, yeah. how many bass players do you know that are lead? line mm. ba- how many bass players play like their lead lines they're not many so but they're the best ones <laughs> well yeah <laughs> my favorites anyway but also with this record as well like there's sort of a, a link with the whole back to reggae thing as well where the chord structures or whatever the, the the filling out of the chords of the tune fairly minimal and the melodic lines of the bass lines and blah 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 yeah. you know yeah um and again the same with the sort of afrobeat thing where like the bass lines are the melodic lines a lot of the time even though that they might splinter in guitar into the guitar lines where you, you you're really you're setting up some, something off in it like setting a trance off so then you have the the link with the dance music thing where you you know again the bass lines are lead lines and the chords are like oh shut up no that makes sense <laughs> no it's true i mean it's a line running through it isn't it yeah. and i think that he he just he he basically Flea has those influences in droves as a player, but then he also has that aggression so he can translate the stuff originally from the eraser. And then it's just, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of the way that you think about when you write bass lines, you write those kind of parts. I'm trying to be Flea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, it's funny, you're it's doing an impression of him, doing an impression of, yeah. you know, whatever. And then and life, then he's doing an impression, impression of, me. of you, doing yeah. of him. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> no, no, Sorry, it's, true. <laughs> it's true though when I when I go back and listen to the eraser those those lines to, you know it's like oh Flea was really the perfect like kind of the only person I could imagine really? doing it yeah you know it, 
it sounds like this music for all of you in some way, shape, or form is doing something for you that music you play, what other projects you might have is just, it's bringing something else out of you that doesn't happen in whatever projects you've been in before. Would that be fair? Yeah, I mean, personally speaking, I'm very conscious of trying to maintain it as, you know, for kicks, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that it doesn't become like, okay, chaps, we have a career. Mm-hmm. We right. have to do this and this and this in order to open this door and this door. <laughs> it's like, nope. We're going to be completely selfish about it, have a really good time, and then take a break. But also the other thing is it does have a, a real... I mean, talking about, like, bunches of musicians getting together and just doing whatever they want for fun. I mean, it is it is that, but it also does have a... It's, it's something... Re- it has a real... Something valid happens. I mean, I feel, anyway, it's like it's not just, you know... A super group in inverted commas it's ah. like you know, it's, you, know you know what I mean it's like it comes Ouch. together it comes together and something happens that is unusual and special I really think that and I really think that's the reason why it's it's happening if it was you know you've, you've, it's got to be substantial right, otherwise yeah. it wouldn't it sure. wouldn't work we wouldn't I don't think any of the as well as, as well any of the people would want to be involved in anything like that unless I think really that the, had, the yeah. only reason yeah. that people the, this whole super group thing is just because there's, there's me and there's Flea and there's blah, blah, blah. So you go, I mean, that was one of the weird things when we initially started out, like loads of Chili Peppers fans were like, no, he can't do this, no. And I had the same things, like, how dare he? I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, well, and I think when people, people saw it, they totally understood, you know, and I've never had so many people come up to me and say, oh, wow, I thought, you know, that was the weirdest idea, but actually it's something really amazing about it, you know, because of the energy between you two. Mm. But then it's, it's it's just a personal thing. It's like hanging out with Joey for years and finally getting to work with having him an opportunity like to yeah, yeah, and you sort of manufacture yeah, that opportunity. Uh, actually, is what happens. Yeah, mm. but that's great, isn't that great? That you know we're able to do that. Well, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all live. Yeah. Mm. yeah, hopefully you'll be back to the states for that. We will. We're going to lose our studio time in about oh, sorry, one, okay, right. one minute. <laughs> so <laughs> otherwise, I'd sit for a while but no, anyway we'll sorry I couldn't be in New York for you to do this in person I really wanted well, to next time we'll do something in person yeah thank you I'd love that okay cheers Thank all you. thanks a lot bye 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 bye